Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say a few words on the amendment that I have pending that we will be voting on in the next few days that will restore the historic power of states to control interest rates that are charged to their citizens. One of the things that I hear the most about when I'm home in Rhode Island is from folks who can't understand why their credit card interest rate suddenly jumped over 30 percent. For a long time, uh, the tricks and the traps in those long credit card contracts, uh, oh, they've pitched people into this, these penalty rates. Uh, I think a lot of people don't read all the fine print and aren't sure exactly what it means. You have individual consumers up against the craftiest lawyers uh, that the credit card industry can hire. And the result is that when you trigger one of these traps, when you get caught by one of these little tricks, you end up being kicked into a very, very high penalty rate. And recently, after the uh, credit card reform bill passed uh, earlier this year ago now, I guess, um, we saw the credit card industry actually not even waiting for the tricks or traps to be triggered. They just began to spontaneously raise people's interest rates, again, very often over 30%. The presiding officer and I are, are both of an age where we can remember a time when interest rates of that level would have been a matter to refer to the authorities, not a commonplace business practice of our biggest industries. And when you think of the pain and the suffering and the economic stress that families get put under when they fall into these burdensome, exorbitant penalty rates, uh, I think it's, we should do something about it. And my amendment would allow us to do just that. It doesn't take any new risks. It doesn't create dramatic new policy. It does things that uh, my friends on the other side of the aisle have been supportive of uh, over the years. It honors the independent authority of states to make decisions uh, to protect their citizens. It supports consumers, the little guy, against the huge corporations. And it puts your local banks on a level playing field with these big out-of-state banks. We got here because of an unusual loophole that the Supreme Court opened 30 years ago. We did not have a debate on the Senate floor saying, what shall our policy be? Shall we take away the rights of states to protect their consumers, to protect their citizens from exorbitant out-of-state interest rates? We never had that discussion. This happened really inadvertently. It happened as the result of a Supreme Court decision back in 1978 that said when a bank in one state and a consumer in another state have a transaction, it's going to be the laws of the home state of the bank that govern. Didn't seem like a very big deal at the time, but it didn't take the crafty big bank lawyers long to figure out that it opened a very tricky loophole and that they could move to the states in this country that had the worst consumer protection legislation, legis legislation. And from there, from there, from those outposts of the worst consumer protection, they could market into other states. And the fact that that other state that they were marketing into had good consumer protections and protected that state's citizens didn't matter, didn't help because of the Supreme Court decision. I submit that if, as a Senate, we were to have debated that proposition, there would not have been many votes for the outcome. The notion that the policy of the United States on protecting consumers from interest rates should be that the rules of the worst state in the country trump every other state is a rule that really nobody in their right mind would vote for. But because of this inadvertent Supreme Court loophole, and because of the crafty work of these big national banks and their lawyers, we are now in that exact situation. 
a situation that none of us would ever have voted for and that we shouldn't tolerate now. So I urge my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to vote for this amendment. I want to thank Senator Cochran for co-sponsoring it from the other side of the aisle. And I want to ask uh, his colleagues in the Republican caucus to uh, join him in supporting it. This bill that we are looking at right now is very esoteric and technical. It is preventative medicine. It engages in things like trying to rebuild the Glass-Steagall firewall, uh, trying to properly regulate collateralized debt obligations, uh, trying to put appropriate leverage limitations uh, on banks. That's all pretty arcane stuff. The American people want this reform, and it should happen. But here's a deliverable that they can take right home, that they will see a difference as soon as their states respond. They can be protected from these outrageous 30% interest rates as the result of this bill. And it's not a big federal government that's coming to do this. It's the state governments, state by state. Indeed, if a state wants to have no consumer protections and have its citizens vulnerable to these predatory and exorbitant credit card deals, fine, they can do that. There's nothing in my bill that requires a state to do anything. It just empowers them with the same power they had at the founding, with the same power they had for 202 years until 1978 came along in this peculiar Supreme Court decision. So I think that it will be a good argument to go home. And as voters in this country look at what Congress has done leading up uh, to the November elections, to be able to say, you know what? Those 30% rates that you never saw when you were a child, that your parents never had to pay, that you as a head of a family are now having to deal with, with these credit card companies from out of state who you can barely reach on the phone. And when you do, you get pushed from phone tree to phone tree. We've done something about that. We've helped you. We've put you in a position where the states are sovereign again over these big national corporations rather than vice versa. Right now, we've made it that the big credit card companies are sovereign over our states. And that's not the way things should be in America. That's not the way the Founding Fathers set it up. It's not right for consumers. It violates the principle of uh, the states being the laboratories of democracy, and it completely eviscerates consumer protection. So I urge my colleagues to support this and to put yourself in a position to be able to go home to your voters and say, we did something really tangible for you. We didn't create bigger government. We let your existing state government make the decisions that for two centuries they were capable of making to protect you from the worst practices of the out-of-state credit card companies. The alternative is to have to go back and explain why people are still paying 30% when you had the chance to do something about it. Why you chose the big out-of-state corporations and their exorbitant interest rates over your own home state's protection of your own home state's citizens. I think the position you want to be in on that one is with your home state, with the doctrine of federalism, with the traditions of the United States of America and with your consumers, rather than on the other side with the big out-of-state banks that charge these exorbitant rates. So I hope that uh, I'll have support on that. I look forward to working with anyone who has questions. And at this point, I'll yield the floor. Oh, Mr. Senate requests uh, for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have the approval of the majority and minority leaders. I ask unanimous consent that these requests be agreed to and that these requests be printed in the record. Without objection. I now yield the floor.